Like low carb is not a magic way to lose weight. We are off on a tangent and not talking about cravings anymore. All right, hit me producer Potts. Can we get super nerdy about food cravings? Yeah, sure. Okay. Is there a connection between satiety and nutrients? Do we crave junk food because we're missing out on specific nutrients? And will giving our bodies the nutrients it needs, i.e. following a nutrivore diet, will the de- will then we decrease our food cravings and ultimately like make those healthy choices easier? Or are we just doomed to fight our like fast food and junk food cravings forever? Cravings are so complex and they're more linked with associative learning than they are to nutrient intake. Um, So more linked to things like our stress levels, our fatigue levels, right? Our, how much sleep have we been getting lately and regularly? So not getting enough sleep will increase cravings, being stressed will increase cravings. And then what you crave will be very driven by what was your comfort food when you were four like the or what was the thing that your mom made when you were sick or what what, you know like what was what's your favorite flavor thing right so like cravings become are very this is very like psychology research not necessarily like physiology or nutritional sciences research so cravings are very um I mean, yes, there are some situations where being deficient in a nutrient will increase the like cravings for that nutrient. So that's fairly well understood for something like salt. Um, but the the claims online that like if you're craving chocolate, it's because you're deficient in magnesium, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That really isn't shown in the in the scientific research to be true. The, the craving for chocolate is more of an association with chocolate and you also happen to maybe not be getting enough magnesium. It's not because chocolate is high in magnesium and your body your body knows. So That's so weird. We see those charts everywhere online. That I wish is it was fascinating. true. Like <laughs> and, and and I think so that's the thing with um nutrition misinformation online is it makes sense on the surface, right? It makes sense on the surface. Uh chocolate has a lot of magnesium in it. Uh, so if I'm not getting enough magnesium, my body's going to know that chocolate has a lot of magnesium. So I'm going to want chocolate. Like it's, it's, it's logical. It sounds great. That's where like the, um, insulin, um, model of obesity also comes from like that same kind of like oversimplified logic. Like, oh, well, uh, if we have, you know, if we have too much sugar and that increases our insulin too much. And then we, you know, store that sugar as, as, uh, you know, fat in our adipose tissue, then ha ha that's that's uh why people gain weight it's i mean uh professor kevin hall who i stan so much has done these incredibly rigorous metabolic board studies to show that is not it's not how it works and that's not like low carb is not a magic way to lose weight we are off on a tangent and not talking about cravings anymore but (laughs) uh but yeah well i did ask you about satiety and nutrients so. so is there is there a connection there though um outside of like our cravings and associations from when we were young and all of that. Yes. So in terms of satiety, um, we have a, a variety of, of basically hormones that are produced in our, in our gut that go up to our brain and say, aye, aye, Captain Brain, uh, the the GI tract is doing, doing the things. We have a variety <laughs> of, they're called hunger hormones. Um, so for example, leptin and ghrelin are kind of like the best understood uh, ghrelin goes up when we're hungry. Leptin goes up uh, when we we've eaten. Did I get that in the right order? Yes, I believe I did. So um, they they kind of are like the 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 the, the teeter totter, the seesaw hormones that are sort of the big hormones driving hunger. But we've got you know a, a bunch of other ones. There's peptide YY. There's uh, cholecystokinin. Um, glucagon like peptide um so there's there's a whole pile of different uh hormones that are produced by the gi tract that help to tell our brain that we've eaten and they're sensitive to different macronutrients so some are more triggered by fat some are more triggered by protein some are more triggered by fiber basically and then insulin is um uh, also it's like a feedback is also part of the hunger hormone signaling triggered by uh, carbohydrates so 
uh, we actually have the best like satiety signaling when we eat balanced meals. So when we're eating protein, fat, carbs, and fiber, right? Like that's why a complete meal is more filling than a low carb meal or a low fat meal or a low protein snack, right? Like, or, or a meal with a lot of refined carbohydrates and not very much fiber. So our uh, hunger signals and satiety signals are definitely impacted by the composition the macronutrient composition of what we're eating. So it's not like I'm not getting enough vitamin C, so I'm hungrier for fruit. I don't, I'm trying to think of like what the example there would be, um, but rather that when we consume balanced meals, those tend to fill us up faster and keep us full longer. But there's also a delay, like 20-ish minutes between when food is like being consumed and gets to the right place to make the hormones and then the hormones have to get in our bloodstream and go up to our brain and like bind with the receptors and, and do all the various signaling in our brain. So there's also, that's why you can like go from uh, like hungry and eat really quickly and like all of a sudden be like way over full. It's because of that delay. So mm. that's why, um, and often actually like add, adding dessert is some like can, there's right, there's so, some hunger signals that are very sensitive to sugar that can be like, you can go from, yes, I'm kind of full to like way over full. It's because of both this delay and the fact that um, our satiety signals are very complex and driven by a lot of different hormones that kind of work in, in concert. So um, did that answer the question? That's my question. Yes, but I'm curious, is there a connection between like, if we have like a really nutrient dense meal, does that automatically mean we're going to be satiated? Like, or is it more about the balance of the composition of the meal or do they go hand in hand? Cause I know like there's some foods on like the Nutrivore site that are so nutrient dense, but they're very low in calories. So it's not always about, and I know you've said, we don't mm. always want to go for the highest nutrient density, but like, is there also a connection there, I guess. So, um, so let me kind of back up and talk about the satiety of ultra processed foods. Cause I think that's kind of like a sideways way of getting at this question. Um, so there was professor Kevin Hall, my, my favorite, my favorite <laughs> researcher in nutritional sciences, uh, did a study a few years ago now where he, it was crossover design. So they had the same participants do one arm of the study for two weeks, and then they switched and did the other arm of the study. So some people did ultra processed foods first and whole foods second, and some people did whole foods first and ultra processed foods second. Um, and what they did was when they were eating the ultra processed food arm of the study, 83% of their calories came from ultra processed foods versus whole foods arm, 83% of their calories came from whole foods. Now, what was so brilliant about this study was that the meals that people were presented with were matched for protein, fat, carbs, fiber, salt, sugar, like all of the things that are sort of known to potentially impact satiety. So the only thing that was different was basically like how refined these foods were and that like addictively delicious quality that ultra processed foods have. While on the ultra processed food arm of the studies, study participants ate an average of 500 calories more per day, which means that over two weeks they gained two pounds. Then when they were on the whole foods arm of the study, they ate 500 calories less, less they lost those two pounds. So depending on what order, they either gained weight and then lost weight or they lost weight and then gained weight, right? Um, and it's a very good example of the difference in satiety like and where dopamine is playing an effect right because these are foods that increase the the dopamine response um it it shows you just how complex satiety is and the big difference that whole foods that are more nutrient dense so there's separate studies that show that the more ultra processed foods we eat the more likely we are to fall short in a whole collection of essential vitamins minerals as well as fiber um so it really shows you um how much more satiating a whole foods based diet is compared to a diet that is overabundant in ultra processed foods. Not that all ultra processed foods are bad or that we need to avoid them completely, but rather we want to stick to maybe 20% of our calories coming from ultra processed foods and certainly not 60%, which is the average American diet or 80% like in this study. 
that being said, like that's kind of like the data that we have to show that more nutrient dense whole foods are more satiating. We don't actually have good studies that go, okay, this meal that provided this much of vitamins and minerals versus this meal that provided this higher amount or lower amount of the same vitamins and minerals, which one's more satiating. Um, and people are quite, you know, people are quite different. So what is more like even how much you're enjoying a food will impact how filling it is. So there's been studies where they give people like really bland foods or the same like smoothie for every single meal. And the people will eat less and less and less over time as they get like tired of that bland, boring, same every single meal food. So I, I think I'm, I'm trying to just say it's like really complex. So I cannot make a claim that uh, you know, eating a more nutrient dense type, choosing more nutrient score foods is going to fill you up faster because there's so many different things that go into appetite, hunger, and satiety and cravings. But overall, whole foods are more so satiating than ultra processed foods. A balanced diet is more satiating and will keep you full longer than macronutrient manipulation diets, at least uh, carbohydrates and fat. Protein is more more filling than carbohydrates or fat. So having a higher protein meal and having a higher fiber will keep you full longer. Um, so more protein, more fiber will will help keep you full longer. Um, but it's uh, I don't think there's like the the part of your question of will eating a more nutrient dense diet like kill my cravings? Probably Sounds like sadly not. no. No, be, just because <laughs> cravings come from such a different place. Um, right. This makes right. a lot of sense, though. It really uh, does. I, I hope mean, so. yeah, it does. It does because it's 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 almost a bit freeing too because it just how with how complex that all is, it's not our fault. It's not like we've made a moral failure or we we didn't have the willpower, right? So I think that's that's such excellent information. Yeah, and I think um, information that's maybe not out there enough. I think there's a lot of uh, guilt and blame when we have cravings or we eat something that maybe wasn't part of our plan. But I think understanding just how complex appetite and hunger and satiety and cravings all are can really go a long way to uh, developing a healthier relationship with food and ourselves. I love that. Thanks, Dr. Sarah. Thank you. Oh, and smash that subscribe button. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs>